Hey guys, CB Super. So there is a tool that I use a lot. It's the bitmap tool. And Guy Dillon actually asked if we could do a little tutorial on how to use the bitmap tool. Um, it's, it is, it is absolutely uh, a powerful tool. And it's something that I probably use, if not every day, um, almost every day. It, it's, it's a very commonly used node inside of my house. Uh, so let's go ahead and just jump in. I'm, I'm already in a fusion composition, and uh, there's a couple different ways that we can pull the bitmap up. Um, one is just shift space. You type in uh, BMP. That's the three-letter designation for it. You could also just start to type in bit. Usually it's the only one that you have, unless you have some custom tools that you've built. Uh, you can also come up to the effects library, and it's under mask, and it's the first one up here, the bitmap. Um, because it is a masking tool, and that's mostly what it's used for. It basically allows you to create a mask for like nodes and effects, uh, but it's going to be based off of images. So it's going to take like values from that image, whether it's color, alpha, hue, saturation, or luminance. You can also do the material IDs for 3D, but I don't, I don't use that so much because I mostly do most of my 3D compositing inside of Nuke. But you can do it here as well. What I use it for more than anything is usually just to create a mask from an image. So you've seen me use it in a bunch of different tutorials. Let's go ahead and bring in some footage real quick and show you just some of the capabilities of this. So inside of the media pool, I have a couple different pieces of footage and we'll just go ahead and bring them all in here. This is a black and white footage. If we come over to the alpha channel, we'll see that the alpha channel is completely white, which means that everything is showing. Um, but say I, I know that there's black and I know that there's white, I wanna turn this into a mask so that I can use it maybe on this exact same footage. Well, to do that, all you have to do is drive it into the bitmap and notice how you're driving it in as an image. So you'll see that there is a image and there's also a mask. So there's an effect mask. Uh, you can also, you can combine two in order to make a different kind of mask, which is, I think that's what we did back in that motion path video. And if you haven't seen that motion path video, I go over a little bit on the bitmap and how we created a mask inside of a mask. But we're gonna kind of do the same thing here. So if I come over onto the bitmap tool, I can look over here to all these settings. Of course, there's a lot of the same settings that you would see, say, if you used any one of these other masking tools like the, the rectangle or the ellipse. You still have levels. Uh, you can still change the, the filter, the soft edge. You can invert it. You also have crop and channel functions as well, though, that are gonna be a little bit different. And each one of these stretch inside width, height, outside, these all do different things. I, to be honest, I don't use these very much. Um, because I like to kind of just do everything within what I actually see is what I get. And that's just because most of the stuff that I do is create procedural tools, but those are options that are available. So let's go into here. Okay, so if I had an alpha channel, which I don't, um, I, to be honest, if I had an alpha channel, I wouldn't need this bitmap because this would have already came with its own alpha channel. But if you wanted to separate the alpha channel from the from this footage you could do that as well but because it's black and because it's white all you have to do is come down here and you can see uh, so we can use any one of the colored channels and we'll do that here in a little bit we could use the alpha channel or the hue or the luminance um, saturation or coverage what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use luminance because we're gonna use the difference in value between light and dark or black and white so now if we come over to this bitmap um, and we load this up into the viewer and we go over to the alpha channel you'll see that this is the alpha channel now what we've done is we've created an alpha channel uh, so if I was to bring this over into the media out and then change it back over to the color channel, you'll see that we are seeing this black and white image. Um, but the reason that we're seeing this black and white image is because it's piping out as an image, which is really cool that you can do that with the bitmap. It's not piping out as a mask, but it can also pipe out as a mask as well. So let's see if we can do a better illustration of that. So let's bring in a background color and we'll just color this red. So a background node, you'll notice it only has an output and it has a mask input. So as you can imagine that this bitmap is, if I pipe this into this background and then I put the background in here, well, because it only has a mask input, it is only piping out the alpha for that mask input. So it's, it's almost like a smart node. It knows what to do by itself. Um, so now you can see that we have effectively taken this image and we've we've basically just colorized it now i actually have already built a tool it's called the cb alpha glow that does something similar to this and i actually use the bitmap in order to change the color of almost any object but the problem lies in it really works well 
when you have an image that is perfectly black and perfectly white, but what about when you're using an image that isn't perfectly white and isn't perfectly black? How, how, how would you use that to create a perfect alpha, which essentially this is a perfect alpha. So let's kind of explore some of those options. So now we have this where we have an obviously light background. We have some light parts on his shoes. We have some light parts uh, on this background. Um, we've got maybe like a medium gray here. But let's say I only want to affect his pants. So I can use a bitmap for that as well. So I can bring in the bitmap node, which again, because it's a mass, if you have something selected, it's automatically going to try and pipe into that. That's not necessarily what we want right now. We actually want to pipe this out as an image into the bitmap. So now that we take a look at it, okay, this is what it's doing right now because by default, it's set up to alpha and there is no alpha but we can also come over here to maybe we'll come over here to the red channel and we'll notice that so his red pants are already like the lightest thing in this in this image but there's also some skin tone here as well um, because skin tone also has red as well and there's grays and the background is pretty light so maybe red isn't the best way to go uh, so green green Again, we're still running into some issues here, but maybe if we come down to saturation, ah, now saturation works pretty well. And one thing we'll notice is that there isn't much saturation at all in these grays and whites, but the pants have a lot of saturation in it. So that's one way we can start to get our mask. And of course we can come in here and we can start clipping the blacks, right? Or in this case, it's not the blacks. What we're doing is we're clipping the lowest levels of saturation. We can start bringing in to make the whites just a little bit brighter. And as you start to clip down from the lower values, you start to clip out a lot of that stuff. But you have to kind of be careful because like all clipping things, you start clipping into your actual mask. Um, and this is kind of where like, say if we start bringing this in, uh, that's when you can start adding some of the soft edge. And what that's gonna do is that is going to pre-blur your image so that now it is still eating into it, but now it's a, it, it's a much more gradual eat away, right? So we're not gonna actually do that just yet. What we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're not gonna clip it too bad. We're actually going to, again, come in here and use a CC node or a color corrector. And now we can kind of play with some of the contrast. We can obviously start to contrast this up so that we, because ideally what we're trying to do is we only want these pants, but we know that we're gonna have some issues with this skin tone. If we start to lift the gamma, what we're doing is we're making this skin brighter. And you can continue to do this until it uh, starts to look really weird. Hopefully what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep as much of this pants as you, as you can. And of course you can also um, raise the saturation a little bit if you feel like you're losing some of the pants. And, and you can always kind of take a look at what you're doing here as well. So we can try and just keep that pants as much as possible. Uh, you can raise the saturation and then you can, you know, check your gamma. Now, see the problem with brightness is that it's going to do it over the entire image. So that's not probably gonna be one of the things that we're gonna mess with. Um, we don't really wanna mess with the reds either uh, because we don't necessarily want to uh, take away anything from the reds. See, if I start to gamma down, it's gonna start taking away red and it doesn't really give us too much. Maybe we'll go up to 10 and then bring it back down some. Okay, so that's probably about as much as that as I'm gonna get out. And then I'll have to probably mask some of that out. So then we can come back into here and we can add a little bit of soft edge to kind of bring back some of that. Now you'll notice that we've taken out too much of, of this and that's because it was dark in here and there was less saturation. So that's okay though. Now when you scroll through here, you'll notice that you have created a color mask um, using this bitmap node. So the cool thing about this is we will have to actually probably come in here and we'll have to add, and that's because like skin around the nipples often can be very close to a red color. And so you may have some other things on him that are very close to the same color as the pants. And again, so like anytime we have any of these pop marks, um, what you would do is you would have to come in here and probably paint those out. Now there's obviously other ways to do the selection of red pants. I'm just using this as an illustration to like show you that yes, you can use specific hues, luminance, saturation in order to actually create a mask.
obviously that isn't the easiest way to do that. I'm just showing you that it can be done. So let's go ahead and delete that. And I'll show you what I used it for in another project of mine. Okay, so now we've jumped into um, a tool that I've been creating and it's still not out yet, but um, I'll just kind of show you a little bit about what I use the bitmap for. Um, so I have this alpha gain control, but what that is really is it's just a color correction node. I just I retitle things when I'm building tools. This element is just a, it's just kind of a smoke uh, energy effect. First thing I'm gonna do is check the size on this thing because this thing looks huge. God, it's 4,000. Okay, let's go ahead and resize it because I don't want it to just destroy my computer and set it on fire. And I'm actually going to bring it down a bit. All right, I just want it real small so it's not, doesn't explode my computer when I connect it to this very complex node structure. Now we've got it resized, it's, it's smaller. And we're actually going to merge it with this black background. So now we have this really cool energy effect. Uh, you'll notice that there is no alpha channel. We'll drive it into this alpha gain control. And what this alpha gain control does, or it's just a CC node, is it starts to brighten the brighter parts of it. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's kind of ate away at some of the, the gray and the darker smokes. So the reason that I have it doing this is because I don't want whatever this node is, I don't want it to affect the entire uh, design, right? So what is the bitmap doing? So the bitmap is now taking that luminance value and it's creating an alpha channel. So this is the alpha channel. So now if I come through this entire crazy node structure and I take a look at what we've done in the output, it's going to take a little bit because it's, it's going through a lot of processes. So now you'll see that I have affected only certain parts of this to, you know, create like this cool uh, glowing effect, right? I didn't, you'll still see when you output it completely, you'll still see the entire uh, design element, or you'll still see the entire stock effect. The only difference is now not all of it will be glowing, only certain parts of it will be glowing. Um, and so I'll just, at the end, you'll see the, 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 the final product or whatever. I'll render it all out and you'll see it. So this is a really cool way that you can create an alpha channel. You can create an alpha channel for an actual effect. Now you'll notice that the glow has been included into the alpha channel. And that is because I have other bitmaps along this trail. So that now, um, so you can include, you can add glows to bitmaps. Um, which is really super powerful because then you start at now you start really tailoring your mat. So I'll I use another bitmap over here as well. So you have uh, this alpha king coming into this and then into this other bitmap. But you'll notice this other bitmap is a little different. What we've done is we've inverted this bitmap, and the reason that bitmap inverts is so when I have this screen glow. Um, sorry, we're still on the alpha channel. Uh, when I have this screen glow and I actually turn it on, um, what it's doing is it's creating this sc this entire screen that glows, but it's cutting out any of the parts that I've added this glow effect to. And that way it doesn't increase the overall intensity of the glow. It just illuminates other parts of the, um, of the screen because I don't want it to uh, inadvertently increase the uh, the brightness value um, by screening on top of itself. It's just a really cool way that you can, you know, kind of get different effects uh, very cheaply, right? Because this doesn't cost me much. A bitmap node is, is very cheap. It doesn't cost anything as far as computational power. I mean, it does a little bit, but like not a lot. It's just a really cool way to use a bitmap node inside of your own tools to create a map to create an alpha when there is no alpha channel. Um, and then, and like the way that I used it here is that I'm using the bitmap in order to almost create my own thresholds. And I could have done it using this node as well, but we noticed that we only have one slider when we talk about the luminance levels here versus if you use a um, color correction node, you can affect a lot more different things. Like, and you'll notice, so if I gain up on this, the alpha will actually get brighter. And that's because what we're doing is we're just we're just affecting it before it gets into the bitmap. And so uh, the bitmaps are telling all these other procedures how much of whatever I want to be selected will be added to a glow. And that might be a bit much. And that's why I like to, whenever I'm creating my tools, I like to have the ability to change this inside of the tool. And you'll see, this tool's coming, not, uh, I'm getting closer and closer to finishing it. It's just, it's... There's still some bugs that need to be worked out. But I just wanted to really illustrate that the bitmap is such a powerful tool. 
Um, but what is it used for? It's mainly just used for creating masks. Um, but you can also uh, combine masks and it's not that it doesn't need to be used every time you want to make a mask because there's a hundred different ways to make a mask inside of DaVinci Resolve Fusion and in the color tab too. I mean, you, you, you can also use qualifiers. You can use keying, you can use luminance keys. There's all kinds of different ways you can actually create masks, but this is the bitmap node, and it's the node that I use quite often. So I hope that was helpful. If you guys have any questions on other ways to use, or if you have any comments, you know, other ways to use the bitmap node, please leave them down in the comments. And if you have any questions on how to use the bitmap node, just go ahead and leave it down in the comments. Uh, if you guys like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.